as I mentioned, my name is Oshin Kovani. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, how we got column level data lineage in Amundsen um, using our tool, Alvin. Uh, so uh, I'll skip this slide because I already talked about myself. Um, so I'm just going to talk about uh, how Alvin sees lineage uh, because it might be a little different than what we most people would think about it. Uh, then we're going to talk about how we integrate with Amundsen. Uh, and then I'll talk about the development process of just developing a transformer generally and kind of the development process that I went through to add the column of lineage. And then we'll show the final results um, that we came up with. And then we can have some questions, of course. Okay, so for us, um, we see data lineage as a, a data set rather than a feature. So we see that as a data set that maps between the, um, the entities that consume and create data. So what that means is it allows us to ask and answer some really important and interesting questions um, and then come up with some really interesting use cases. Um, so I've put four of them here. Um, so for visual, uh, with visual lineage, we can answer the questions that are, uh, where's the data going? Where's the data coming from? Uh, what data flows to a dashboard? Uh, with impact analysis, we answer the questions of, if I drop this table, what is gonna mess up? Um, you know, what data will change if, you know, the intern deletes a database or a table um, and what will happen to jobs if, you know, I that need the data that we're going to delete. Um, and problem tracing is another usage case. Um, we can talk about, like, is the, is the latest data available? Uh, why is uh, a query slowing down? Uh, why is a job failing? And we can also talk about cleaning up our database with uh, from stale assets. So we can check uh, who's queried old data, um, what tables haven't been used. We can delete those, and it saves us um, a ton of money in terms of like database costs and things like that. Um, so going into that, um, we had to think about a few guiding principles of, um, of our data model so we could uh, have the most high quality data set possible. So for us, we wanted a platform agnostic and a general data model. Um, that allows us to have flexibility and granularity uh, while being able to maintain some level of um, being, being able to uh, maintain some generality in what platforms we can support. Uh, we also want it to be column level uh, because we feel like uh, table lineage is great, but column level uh, lineage is really important when you are thinking about how data flows between systems. So that's why we wanted to process this and uh, lineage as well, so we could understand how a column of data from, say, a BigQuery instance could flow into a Tableau dashboard or into Looker, um, but keeping that within one system. We also wanted to uh, be plug and play. So we wanted to make sure that you just plug in your credentials and everything just works. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that people could stay within one tool when uh, trying to use our data set. So that's kind of where we looked at Amundsen and saw oh, there's uh, companies like Revolut and um, uh, Snapchat using Amundsen, we want to be able to share our data set. So that's where kind of our thinking came in was, uh, let's, let's create a transformer for um, Amundsen powered by our data set so we can provide table lineage and column lineage data for Amundsen so people don't have to leave the tool. So now we're just gonna take a quick step back from Alvin. Uh, I'm just gonna describe the development process. Um, this was uh, the first project of my career actually. Um, so this was kind of a process and a, a whole journey that I was really uh, proud to be, um, I guess, hazed into in terms of uh, my like come, becoming a software developer and software engineer. So uh, for us uh, developing the transformer, we wanted to enable lineage in Amundsen. So uh, we needed to first pull from the GitHub master and also uh, enable the, the correct lineage tags so we could have lineage in our front end. And so that included the table lineage and column lineage and our configurations, as well as for our dashboard lineage, have the index dashboards uh, flag to uh, be true as well. So after that, it was just four pretty simple steps. Um, within the data builder class, there's a base transformer that we just need to extend. So for example, in just like a, another folder, uh, I created a class just for an example, just create an example transformer that uh, extends the base transformer. And then the second step was add the configuration keys. So basically this, all this does is tell us um, if you're using an 
external service, for example, just have the API key or your instance URL or your platform configurations, that would you just add them as instance variables. Um, and then there's three abstract methods within the transformer, the base transformer class. So that's the init variable or the init method uh, where you take in your configuration variables and you can do what you want with them. And then the transform method is where the magic happens, at least in our case. Uh, we would receive the table metadata and column metadata and dashboard metadata objects from Amundsen. And we could yield those. And then after yielding those, do something interesting. So kind of plain in our own internal tool, we were able to add table lineage and column lineage and dashboard lineage, and then add descriptions and usages and things like that that we wanted to add. And the getScope method was uh, just an identifier uh, so for our configuration variables that I'll explain in the next step. And the next step really is just to plug it in. So um, that getScope method we can see in our configuration, the, uh, we have the getScope and then pair that with our configuration key and configuration variable value. And then we just add that to the default job within Amundsen. And then basically what that does is you add your own transformer to an ETL task in Amazon, and then you can run it and you can get um, whatever data you'd like. So for us, that meant um, calling our own lineage API. So for us, um, this graphic kind of explains uh, what our transformer does on a conceptual level. So we extracted from a service such as BigQuery or Tableau and received table metadata and dashboard metadata and call metadata objects then we could yield those and then um, send them to our own lineage API. So what our API does is just map the Amundsen entity key, convert it to our own internal key, and then uh, pull all the lineage data that we needed, and then return that into Amundsen in a format that it could understand. So for Amundsen, that's table lineage and column lineage and dashboard table objects. So on a conceptual level, the way we did that was that um, we had to kind of massage the data from our own uh, lineage model to the table and column lineage models that Amundsen has. So for us, you can see on the right side, that is our model. And it's super general because we want to make sure we're uh, platform agnostic. So what that means is uh, we're going to have a little more generality in terms of what we have. But uh, basically what this shows is how we massage the data from our model into Amundsen. So what we did was we converted the Alvin keys there into an Amundsen key that Amundsen could understand and then aggregated the downstream dependencies. We had to do the same thing for dashboards. Uh, for us, we see dashboards as the same entity as like a table or a column. Um, so for us, it was like the same model and then mapping that into the dashboard table relationship that you can see in Amundsen as well. So basically what we can show you now is uh, the output of what we what we did after uh, mapping everything. So in Alvin, this is a um, this is a pipeline that uh, starts with processes and ends in a Tableau dashboard. Um, we can see that there's uh, tables uh, with employees, and um, social security number is a column within this uh, each table. And now we can when we ingest this into Amundsen, we can see that we have a pretty similar or actually uh, a very uh, the same structure. Um, we don't have the dashboard here because dashboards are represented differently in Amundsen. Uh, I can show that after. We can also see we have column lineage here. Um, we have the two social security numbers that are directly upstream of the employees offices all table. And uh, we have the dashboard that we saw earlier that is downstream of the employees offices. We can actually also click into this and see that there are four tables directly upstream of the Tableau dashboard. So this is um, that we could take another step back and see uh, how we integrated. So basically what we basically did was uh, we created a transformer that calls our API that we have ingested our data into already. And then we could run the ETL task in Amundsen and uh, output our lineage and uh, use, uh, usage data into Amundsen so that data engineers don't have to leave the tool. So they could see everything, including their tables and dashboards and uh, columns, as well as the lineage. Um, I do need to thank a few people. Um, the Slack and dev community for Amundsen was really important for me, uh, just trying to get up to speed on just how to develop 
for Amundsen. Uh, Grant Seward, I don't know if he's here, but um, he spent hours helping me out with metadata and versioning issues. Um, and he has a really cool dog in his picture. Um, as well as Alvin, my whole team has been super supportive. Um, and my Norwegian coworker, coworker Martin, um, kept pestering me about how to say Amundsen for about a week because I kept saying Amundsen. And uh, yeah, that's not that doesn't go down well with the with him. So I now know it is a Amundsen. So um, yeah, that is that is column level data lineage. Um, are there any questions? Well, thank you so much, Roshi. Um, questions. Oh, Madison, <laughs> love that comment. Uh, Madison, go ahead. Hi, um, thanks for the great presentation. And yeah, I guess I'm learning too, and that's gonna take a long time to figure out how to, <laughs> say, <laughs> how to say the right word. No, no um, but it sounds like, just to confirm, it sounds like you had the lineage information present elsewhere in a different system, and that system you were able to leverage in the transformer to like attach that to the data that was coming from the extractor. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, exactly. I'll, sh I'll show you this. Um, yeah, so basically there's two parallel processes happening here. Um, so we ingest the data into Alvin and then uh, we can access that in the Amundsen ETL job. Got it, okay, cool. Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking about this in our use case and we don't have that lineage information anywhere except for probably Confluence. <laughs> so yeah, I was just, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, trying to think about that. So thank you. Yeah, yeah no problem. Um, thank you for the great presentation, Roshin. Uh, we are gonna uh, pause it here. And if you have any other questions uh, for, for Roshin, please hit him up on Slack. Um, thank you again for presenting. Thank you.